All right, it's me again. So I thought I'd give a quick update on to uh, the state of play with the C6 and uh, explain what's been happening. Now, I don't remember exactly what I filmed over the past few days because it's been quite fraught. So I thought on the off chance I haven't filmed everything, I'll explain it. So this will just be a quick talking video. And by the time you watch this, I will either be on my way back from or have arrived back from France, hopefully in the C6, or this will have come back on a breakdown truck, I don't know. So the situation is, or situation was, the last video I uploaded today, which uploaded about an hour and a half ago, was one where I'd put it all back together, declared it done, and driven off quite happily, and then there was a little, oh noes, and then a leak on the floor. The leak on the floor, which should be covered in a following uh, subsequent video, the leak on the floor turned out to be the water pump, which decided to start leaking for no reason. I hadn't touched the water pump. I'd done nothing with the water pump. I hadn't touched the belt. I hadn't gone anywhere near it. My wife actually came up with a theory which is probably about right, where she said, well, it's probably just moved on to the next weakest link. It could be, you know, if I've replaced the thermostat housing, stop that leaking, replace the radiator, stop that leaking, went to the next nearest thing. Um, the water pump that came off it, quite possibly the original one, the little videos and things I took show it was minging. Um, that's now in the bin. But it didn't end there because it took me a while to change that because I've never changed one before. And as you can imagine, anything in the engine bay of a C6 is hellish. It is a hellscape. I've not done one before. It took me a while to do. It took me a while to figure it out. Even finding one was difficult. Random. Even finding a water pump was difficult. So I managed to find one. And I changed it. Put it all together. Got it running. Same sort of thing. Fast idling. Get the temperature up. Fans in and out. Boom. Absolutely bone dry. For 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, it started spraying coolant out again. Out the side. Way worse than it was before. The puddle on the floor was massive. Expensive coolant. I have put through this car 20 litres at least of waterless coolant. I've wasted a couple hundred quid's worth. Honestly, that's one of the downsides of waterless coolant. If something goes wrong, it's quite frustrating because it's expensive. So when it's in there, great. But if your car was a bit incontinent, I had problems. So it all came out again. And basically what had happened, um, the car didn't go on fire. I didn't put it on fire, miraculously. Um, but it's not completely out of the woods, I have to be honest. Um, what happened was uh, the water pump has a rubber seal around it, a big O-ring. Um, I did keep it to show you and I've since lost it. But basically that O-ring got pinched as it went in. I put Vaseline on it to help it in, but you're doing it blind. You can't see at all what you're doing. It's only three bolts. And it's a boss and it goes in, there's no ring, but the O-ring got pinched and you, you can't even get in there to, to push it evenly. You can't get it, you know, you, you kind of like, you, if you had the space, you'd be like this, you'd just be wiggling it and teasing it and checking the seal and just, that's it, just give it a little. And eventually it would, and then you just do the bolts up, done. No, you can't do that with this. You can't get in there. You can see the bottom bolt when you take the front wheel and the arch liner out. You can see some of the stuff from the top. Obviously, you have to remove the pulley to do any of this from the side. So I've got the water pump out, found that it was uh, it had nicked the seal, managed to pinch the seal from something else. I can't even remember what I got the seal from. It, it was in a Honda bag. Um, probably something to do with the Imp's bike carbs or something. No, it can't be, because it was a big one. I found a seal. It was slightly smaller, but that actually helped me out, because it meant it stretched onto the water pump or coolant pump as it now is, stretched onto it, was less likely to move about when I put it back in, lathered it in Vaseline. Honestly, this thing looked like it was going out for a night in Soho and popped it in there. Lovely, went in, job done. Bowled it all back up, filled it up with coolant without running it. It didn't leak. This was late at night. I then tried changing the engine oil, which went all over my arm. And then I tried changing the gearbox oil, which I couldn't do because I didn't have a drain plug key. For some reason, I lost it to undo the drain plug. That was after the uh, filler plug key rounded off. So I managed to hammer that one out, but yeah. So I managed to change 
a litre of gearbox oil, which isn't really going to do anything. So that didn't really work. I was going to put the under tray back on it because I've never driven this car with the under tray fitted. Um, and I was going to put the under tray on it and to enjoy the quietness on the motorway. But I decided not to because if it starts leaking coolant or any other fluid that it might decide to kick out, I won't know where it's coming from because it will hit the under tray and divert. So I left it off. And that is kind of where we're at. I took it on another drive. I've done about 40 miles now with the coolant in there. So far, bone dry. I left it running yesterday, 90 minutes out there with a bit of cardboard underneath it. Left it running in the sunlight, 90 minutes, not a drip. So you would assume that we're out of the woods, but we aren't out of the woods. And it's not the car, it's me. I have reached the end. I'm, it, that's broken me. The last, last few days, that has absolutely broken me. It's, a, I love it, don't get me, I mean, look at it. It just looks so good, especially when it's been cleaned. I mean, it's only gone through a car wash, but it just looks epic. But what with everything going on, the projects I've got on, there are issues going on behind the scenes, which you guys don't know. You, you guys. Um, yeah, you, you know, there's a lot going on. Financial things are happening. And this is just, there was the costs. If it was just the costs, it would be fine, but it's not just the costs. It's running now. And to be fair, I'm not knocking this. It's been really, it's been quite reliable. Considering that it came broken, bottom of the rung, bordering on being a parts car and the adventures I've had in it and the things I've done and I will have hopefully if it goes to France and back fine I'll have done 10,000 miles in it and I can look back if it does this trip well with fond memories but it's it's time for me to bow out because if anything ever needs doing in that engine bay it's an ordeal and it's you know it barely has its bonnet up this thing it, it, it does plough on but just ploughing on isn't quite enough because it's £60 a month to tax it. And the economy is horrific around town. It's terrible. It's like 25 to the gallon, 26 to the gallon around town. It's just not its forte. And that's what I use it for. I'm using it for the things it's bad at. The ride isn't amazing around town. And I know there are people in the comments who go, oh, the C6 is the greatest ride in Citroen ever. It's not. It just isn't. It is just not. I'm going to do one of the last things I do on this car will be a video explaining why the C6 isn't one of the best riding Citroens about by some distance. However, I also think it's the Citroen that's got the hardest job of any Citroen to date, regards its ride with expectations and the confinements it had to do it within. And I think for what it is, it's amazing. It's really, really good. But in terms of softness, it, I mean, a BX is smoother than that. So I can get out of this and get into a BX. And yeah, it's not as refined and everything, but it's smoother. It deals with the bumps better. Imagine what it's going to be like when Clements on the road, if that ever happens. So, yeah, I, the things this car will be good for is just cruising up and down the motorway. It would just, it would be brilliant at it. Or fast A roads across rural France. Um, it's got a chunk, a dink in its tire. Great. Um, yeah, it's. For what I use it for, it's not good. It's big, it's juicy, it's doing it harm, doing these short journeys all the time, is um, is not doing the engine any good. And I've done regular, I mean, I've done an oil change after 6,000 miles, which is way under what it's supposed to be, but it helps it out if it's only doing low mileage. So if it was cheap to run, I'd forego everything, everything else, if it was, like ridiculously smooth, smoother than anything else. I possibly forego everything else, but the fact that it isn't quite the smoothest thing and it's expensive to run, and if it needs working on, it's a pain. It's not that it breaks down a lot, it doesn't. It's, I think it's been quite really good, if I'm honest. I think this is, for what this has put up with over its life, this has done brilliantly, but if it needs repairing, it's not like having a Suzuki Alto or an Igo or a Picasso, or something like that. It's, it, it, it's, it becomes an ordeal. And I have other cars that are ordeals. I have other projects, and they're allowed to be ordeals. An SM is allowed to be an ordeal. 
a DS is allowed to be an ordeal. Even a BX is allowed to be an ordeal because some of them are nearly 40 years old. It's, in, it's entitled to be a pain if it wants. That is old by most people's standards, but it's not that old. And it's more difficult. That's more difficult to work on than the SM so far. And you're going to say, oh, you haven't worked on the SM, how do you know? I've done a bit. That's harder. Because it's packaging. That's got so much more crammed into it. So I love it. And I'm so, so happy I've had it. And I'm going to be very sad. Like, really emotional, I think, when it goes. Because it, it's, the, it's, yeah, it's just been... It's just been brilliant, it, it, but it's it's nearly ended me. At, at, at this point in time, with things the way they are, um, maybe I'll go into it more one day, but with things the way they are, with everything the way it's happening, it's just not right anymore. It's not the right car for me, and I'm not the right owner for it, not anymore. I might have helped it, I might have, you know... I, the thing that saddens me is the thought that it ends up as a parts car somewhere because it, it could well do. But there's there's potential there's potentially someone who would be at an excellent home. So I can keep my fingers crossed that something can be done there. Um, but you know, yeah, it's uh, the trip to France. Other than a couple of perhaps a couple of little test videos we'll do, the trip to France is it's uh, is it's swan song. I'm afraid. But um, hopefully it'll be a good one. So on that, I'm going to end this. And I'm going to go home and then edit this. And then hopefully I'll go to France and back. And if I go to France, there will be footage from France. Unlike last time, I'm actually going to go and film something. So, all right. I'm going to go before you see a grown man cry. <laughs>